Hey guys, it's JT Tran, America's number one Asian dating coach, and today I have a very special guest. I know I always say it when I interview someone, but I have really, truly a special guest. He is a fellow Viet. I've been following his career for a very long time. Kung Lee, mixed martial arts fighter and actor. Thank you so much, uh, sir, for coming on and being interviewed. I appreciate it so much. Hey, uh, thanks for having me. Just want to say hi to all the fans that... Um follow you and um, just uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. Now, one of the really cool things about you that I found, because originally I saw you on Pandora, which I thought was like a really cool kind of sci-fi horror, but you're this this character that knew um, like this martial arts and fighting all these kind of like aliens, but in, you know, you're Vietnamese too, and you didn't really have, I think, spoken lines. But I started following you, and you learned um, martial arts because you got, you know, encountered racism growing up. Is that right? Yeah, um, actually, going back to Pandorum, um, I did deliver lines, but like on the on the ship, I I was Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, for the audition was uh, they were looking for a Japanese character. Yeah. But um, you know, I told them I didn't know how to speak uh, Japanese, so. Um, I can do it in Vietnamese, and you know, at that time they were looking for someone very physical, and who can like really, you know, do their own stunts. And, and uh, so I, I did an audition. I did all my lines in um, in Vietnamese, and then uh, within a few hours, uh, my agent called me and said that, you know, you'll be going to Germany and uh, you know, being uh, you know, uh, starring alongside with uh, Ben Foster and Dennis Quaid. Yeah, I mean, I thought that was so cool, like seeing a, a fellow Viet, you know, on the screen and being as badass as you. So, um, you, and then I recently saw you in Into the Badlands, which is, I've been watching, which I thought you were like really cool. Um, and you've got a couple projects that are coming up. Um, you have like a movie of uh, Antonio Banderas. Yeah, it's uh, the, the project, uh, the movie's called uh, Security. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know when exactly it's gonna come out. Um, on their advertising, it says July, um, Fifth or something like that, mm -hmm. but it's actually August fourth. Um, but whatever, um, whatever date. Uh, it's uh, with Antonio Banderas and Ben Kingsley. Uh, so you know, I got a chance to work alongside, you know, Ben Kingsley, who's like just intense yeah. when he turns on and off. And um, you know, it's a. I, I learned a lot, and I was over there for two months. And, you know, I definitely, uh, you know, I'm enjoying this part of uh, the entertainment world. No, oh, that's cool. That's cool. You're definitely one of the few Asian Americans that are getting out there in that world and, and making it a success. Um, but before that, I want to explore because a lot of my my students and their audience, you know, they're they're Asians and they're living in America, and sometimes they they lack confidence because, it's like me, growing up in Texas, I get picked on a lot. Like you know, I in in Dallas, Texas, you got a lot of, a lot of rednecks. You know, I got called gook and chink, and I know a lot of other Asians did too. Um, like, how did you get into martial arts, and did that really help you kind of center yourself and, and kind of like stand tall? You know, before I even got into martial arts, um, I was already being, of course, I was being picked on. I was a smaller kid, and I, I was one of those kids that uh, I, I was kind of like fearless, right? If someone picked on me, I was the one who's going to throw the first punch. Mm. And of course, now day and age is you get in trouble the schools are a lot more strict you can't do what you should be doing to your kids which is putting over putting them over your lap and spanking them when they get out of line um so it, 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 society now is it's 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 hard to gauge uh, now that i'm an adult but back then um you know it, it's you got you kind of have that you need that attitude like you know hey i'm i might be asian I'm focused in school. I do my work. I, I mind my own business. But if you're gonna excuse my Vietnamese, but you're, just, you're gonna fuck with me, I'm I'm gonna try to knock your head off. And you gotta kind of have that attitude, or you're gonna be a victim. It's it's mm -hmm. how you carry yourself. And I think after I started standing up for myself, you know, and um, even though I got my butt kicked the first like three times, um, I I I would. I would not back down from a fight. And when, when you become a little bit more scrappy, those guys tend not to mess with you because even though you're small, you're wiry, and you just go down and, and, and you bring the fight to them. So, yeah, you're going to get your ass kicked a little bit, but the, then the ass kicking starts, 
you know, it, the table starts turning. Right. Because you start getting seasoned, you get better at throwing punches, and that that you know that rage comes out. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think um, Asians, you know, they're smaller. They're, they're the way they're raised. You know, the parents might be conservative. So yeah, I think if you don't evolve, you become you become extinct. Right. Right. If you're living in America, you need to stand up for yourself. You know. Whether it's a white kid, black kid, a Mexican kid, it doesn't matter. Um, bullying happens in every nationality. It's, it, no one singles out. Even Asian kids bully other kids. That, you know, um, but less of us bully other kids. It happens. It's just who decides to stand up and who, uh, you know, and who tends to, you know, fall and become that victim. And me, I, I would. I was the one who says, I'm going to fight. And then coming home with a couple black eyes, my mom put me in martial arts. And from martial arts, I already had that confidence. And I just became more uh, focused, more determined, more disciplined. And that, that's, that's what got me to where I'm at today. Great, great. Yeah, I know that you know bullying happens everywhere. But I think statistically... Asians, we do get targeted more. I mean, there's tons of reasons for it, right? But it's definitely something that I experience. A lot of people that I know experience it, but you're absolutely right, just standing up. You know, I I regret that as a kid because my parents told me like, oh, you shouldn't get into a fight, but it's something that kind of carries with you. It's only until later when I actually stood up for myself, even though it was like this, you know, really big guy. And I actually had to just even jump up and like, I couldn't even hit him, like punch him. That's how tall he was. But he called my mom like a Connie Chung or something like that. And that was like, so he he was going to kick my ass before the teacher broke us up. But, you know, it's it's something that just the act of standing up for yourself, as I think, is hugely important. Um, So when you started martial arts, and I think maybe like looking back from your experience now, what would you say helped you get a lot of confidence? Like, what should they study? You know, if they don't want to make it a profession but maybe just to get get physically healthy, put on some more muscles. What should they study just so they can get something under their belt? Um, I, I think just being fit, being mm-hmm. in shape, knowing your body and knowing yourself is, is, is a key. You know, like when you learn about yourself, like, uh, like w- when I get to at a certain level in martial arts, when I'm about to fight, a lot of times I'm telling myself the only person – who can defeat me is myself mm-hmm. because it's all here right and if you look at the, the dynamic of someone bullying someone it's just not someone bullying someone and uh, it's the person like you you look back oh I regret not standing up for myself because you you weren't taught any better the parents now how, like you know me as a parent I'm not sure if you have kids but now we're we are telling our kids I don't care if you get suspended. If someone's picking on you, you stand up for yourself. Get your ass kicked, we'll come home and we'll train harder or I'll find a gym for you to sharpen your skills or to develop more skills. And that's how the parents should really teach their kids because the world's not getting any safer, Mm -hmm. right? So there's many things that happen when you don't stand up for yourself. One, mentally. Yeah, sure, you got bullied, you got beat up, you got pushed around. But what does that do for your self-confidence, your self-esteem, right? Right. But if you stand up for yourself, even though you got your ass kicked, you stood up for yourself. And you did everything that you could to stand up. And at least other people will at least give you that, like like the respect of you standing up for yourself. And if you don't stand up for yourself, a lot of people will say, he's just a chicken-ass little bitch. Right. Excuse my knees, you know, <laughs> whatever. But um, that's the truth. Yeah. So... Like for me, I tell my kids, never back down. Right. Care how big the kid is, how many of them there are, you know, you break your nose, your teeth, there's good surgeons out there. Right. You know, and we'll come after those fuckers. Right. And, you know, me as a parent, <laughs> I'll, I'll go to their mom's house and their dad's house. Gotcha, gotcha. No, I mean, I, I completely uh, agree. Obviously, you know, you have a society that's, you know, who knows what's, what's going on, but it's definitely where... I think Asian parents should teach their Asian kids to stand. I mean, there's smart ways to do it, but it's very important because these are scars that carry with us. 
as well That's as what, like the, the yeah. pride. If you had that pride going up, growing up, then you know you're going to be more successful later on in life. So um, speaking on more success later on in life, you have recently, or maybe not recently, but gotten into acting more. And there aren't a lot of Asians in Hollywood, but you're you're making a dent. You're, you're getting like roles. Um, what has been something that you've you've getting into Hollywood and getting into you know into the Badlands, which I think is like a great show with with you know you and the main character, where it has certain like Asian sensibilities with martial arts, but also a very diverse characters um, of all backgrounds. Like, how's it been for you getting into Hollywood, dealing with with how Hollywood is just you know, with all the whitewashing controversy of, like, Ghost of the Shell and things like that, how's it been for you getting into Hollywood? Well, you know, if, if you look at the big picture, there's not that many roles for the Asian character, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I don't even look at it as the whitewashing. I know a lot of people are offended by it, but if you look at the big picture, the reason why they're putting a white character in an Asian part is because that white character happens to be able to get the funding for the movie to go green to mm. become greenland right right so th this is how i see it there's a lot of rich asian people out there no and a lot of them are not doing excuse my vietnamese again shit to <laughs> to to bring up you know the asian community you know, de yeah community and develop you know the the up-and-coming stars and you know nowadays you, you got those you know some you know some up and coming Asians that are, you know, like more model type and, you know, they do some Taekwondo or they, 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 you know, they're good um, performers, you know, but, you know, they're, they're still hoping to make that big dent to become that part. But realistically, how many of them will be in Hollywood's leading man? Right. Right. It's going to be like that needle in a haystack. So the, I think the big thing for me, um, sure I can run around being villains and you know and, and um, you know be take part. Of course you want to take part because you learn more. You work with the big directors. You learn how to work on a big set. But I think the big, biggest thing is you got to find the investors, the Asian investors, to to look at the, the the picture. And sure maybe we won't sell as much as we would in the states, but we surround ourselves with. A bunch of great American or actors that will sell in different, um, like uh, different territories, right? Yeah. Then, then you take on whatever skill set you have, whether it's acting, whether it's martial arts, whether, and you you find stories that cater to your your strong points, and that's what I'm doing, right? I mm -hmm. I'll write my own script or. Uh, my couple of my buddies will brainstorm. We'll come up with an outline, and we'll, I'll just get some like a couple of writers to write the script, and then I'll go look for the funding. And that's yeah. what I got to do now because realistically, Hollywood would, would rarely is is gonna you know put uh, an Asian lead. Yeah, you know, and you have to go to Asia. Yeah. But if you have the right skills and you can do certain things that the other guys can't do, then, you know, your chances become better. So really, for me, <clears throat> as an Asian um, in the entertainment world, you got you got to kind of pave your own way yeah. in order to, to get to the top. Me, I'm not going to go and do a movie just to do a movie. I, I want the big blockbuster worldwide. I want the raid times 10, you know, so that's... And then... Not only you have to look at that picture, but you got to look at how what's new, what's in, what's the world about now. It's it's it kind of, really it's terrorism. It's the crazy thing is even your criminals are become tactical. So some of the criminals are more t better trained than some of the cops because they're paying attention. You know, like I, I'm I'm training under. Uh, Ronan, right. two ran, uh, former Special Forces Green Beret, twenty-seven years. Uh, I mean, twenty-seven. Con he's been in twenty-seven countries. Served served at the highest level um, in in as a Green Beret. Um, so he's he's seen it all. He's been through <laughs> you know, hundreds, if not thousands, 
of gunfights. Right. So he's seen every enemy. He said it's only going to get worse. And now he's going around teaching cops. I, I traveled around with him already three different times. And the, like, society, your, 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 like, that whatever the district, they're not funding the cops enough. They're not putting out enough money for the cops to be trained properly. You know, so I, I think in some departments don't even allow their cops to wear wear a knife. What if my wife flips a car and she can't get out of her seatbelt, and the cop comes out? What's he gonna What's he gonna do? You know, so you know, and if something happens, if you're at your house and a home invasion comes in. They're not the first responder. You're the first responder. So how good are you? How right. prepared are you? You know? Yeah, sure, I can do martial arts. I can kick ass. I can, you know, I'm, I'm in that handful of, you know, elite martial artists um, and fighters. But when someone comes in, they got a knife, they got a gun, odds favor them. So how, how, how are people becoming hard targets? Is your heart... Is your home hardened? Is your car hardened? You know, so it's it's the, the society that we live in, and and I think that you know um, that that's the, the 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 focus that if I'm going to do a movie, it's got to be realistic. Mm-hmm. It's got to be what people can. Oh man, because there's you know I'm I'm telling you, tell me if I'm wrong or not. All those um, TV shows how people get away and cause a crime and, and then they get away in, in the courtroom. Don't tell me those criminals are not watching those those TV shows and saying, ah, another one, in, you know, well, we should start making some shows or some something so other people are like, damn, I, I got to be more prepared. Yeah. So I got the show called Fight or Fight. I got it. I got that funded myself. And, um, you know, and hopefully a network will pick it up and more people will be educated. But it just all comes down to you got to make it entertainment. But I have two Asian guys um, hosting the show, me and yeah. Tulan, right? I and I didn't favor Tulan because he's Vietnamese. I just picked him because he was the most experienced that I, out of all the elite um, soldiers, I, I I talked to. Right. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah, today, especially the movies are more realistic and they're, they're complicated, yeah. right? And so you definitely have to approach your audience and respect their intelligence. Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, like you, what you're saying is because Hollywood is so difficult to get your, your break in, especially if you're minority and Asian, that so many Asians I know like are kind of do it yourself in YouTube. That's why it seems like you've got a lot of Asians that are at least making them name in YouTube or as you were pointing out self-funding because you're not going to get all like the old Hollywood money, you know, to back you because you're just not part but of that you, crowd. You know, take nothing away from the Asians that are uh, hot on YouTube. It's great, mm-hmm. right? They're making a name for them. They got tons of followers, but look at their content. <laughs> They're making fun of the Asian people. Yeah. You know, it's like the, 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 the making know. fun of the, fo- like our fellow Fobby brothers. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so I got a problem with that too, but yeah. Right. There's only going to be so much content of that you can mm-hmm. do, man. Do something like, think of something original. Just yeah. think of something powerful that people want to, you sure. know, like, oh man, think about it. Yeah. So that's kind of like. So my last question that I'm sure my audience is all, all wondering. So you're, you're married and, and you have kids, but back in your, your younger days, um, looking back, if you could give any piece of advice to your younger self as a single man or any of our audience, what is your, your best advice for when it comes to meeting women? Like how to be confident, you know, now, you know, now you're married and have kids, but like, you know, if, if you're looking back when you're younger. You, you know, the, the, the crazy thing is when I was younger, I wasn't, I wasn't the one trying to chase, chase the woman. I'm, I'm like a long relationship type of guy. I, uh, but the, the great thing is because of my self-confidence, because how I carry myself, I didn't have any problem chasing them, you know? It, it was easier to talk to them. And uh, like, like I would tell my, my younger self, hey, couple girls that you ended up you know having a relationship meeting with, meeting you should 
kind of instead of looking at their bodies, kind of should look up here. You yeah. Know? And that might have, you know, helped you, you know, along your path of, you know, where you're trying to go as a martial artist, as a fighter, as a as a wrestler. So uh, that's that's my advice. You know, like a, a lot of these um, younger guys, of course, you know, they're thinking of their, their <laughs> second hand. Right? Yeah, the, the little brain. So. So. I'm, I'm going to be real. You know, I'm sorry. If, if anyone on here is offended, but hey, realistically, it's the truth. Tell me if I'm lying, then then I'll go study to make sure that I'm getting it right. But that's what most younger guys are thinking of. And mm-hmm. they're not thinking of their future. They're not thinking of of what could happen or how you build your path. They're thinking of right now. Yeah, the, the short-term results over the long-term growth. Short-term. And then you know what? When you pick from the low-hanging fruit enough, that's then that's what the worth that you give yourself. Mm-hmm. You find the right partner right off the back and you build together, whether it works or not, you're learning and you're growing with another partner. Right. Right. So you know, I, I was with my ex for, you know, nine dating, nine married, we grew apart. Mm-hmm. You know, and shit happens. Right. Yeah, but, you know, I got I got a wife now that challenges me to be that better person, be that better father, be that better martial artist, be that better overall person. So, you know, if, if you tend to focus on, you know, right now, you might lose tomorrow. That's yeah, it. cool. Very wise words, sir. I'm sure our audience appreciates it. Um, how can all of our viewers or audience find more about you and your latest projects and find out, like, when you're going to be showing up next on the big screen or the small screen? Um, you know, I'm, I'm on social media. Um, my Instagram handle is C-U-N-G-L-E-185. And that's the way I used to fight at. A lot of people, what's 185 for? K- uh, Kung Lee, 185. I fought, I fought at middleweight, 185 pounds. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Twitter, Kung Lee, 185. And Facebook is just Kung Lee. You, you look at the blue mark. That's official, the Kung Lee official, and then yeah. Kung Lee official, um, yeah. uh, dot com. We'll be, we'll be putting it all in the description box and the link up there so you guys can check that out. And awesome. um, and your next movie, Security, you said it was coming out in August? It should be. It should be. <laughs> their advertising shows July. Okay. I don't know. So it's July or August. So hopefully first by the week of July, first week of August. Yeah. So Whatever. Be ready. Um, I throw down with Antonio Banderas. Nice. You know, and nice. Um, Desperado. Yeah. <laughs> so so by the time uh, this is edited and out there, hopefully the movie will be popping up soon. But otherwise, follow Kung Lee on his Twitter and Facebook, and he'll be announcing it. So thank you so much. Dream. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate it. Bye. All right, bye-bye. Asian power. <laughs> Thanks for watching our video. I hope you liked it. And make sure you guys subscribe to this channel and watch all our other videos. Great news too. Every Monday, we'll be putting out a new weekly video. That's right, we've got educational seminars, street interviews, uh, fun infield pickup videos, and anything else we can come up with that's fun for you guys to watch. So check 